let's pray. Let the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 As we, before we begin our message this morning, I want to just make two very brief but important public announcements. I want to say to each of you here and uh, who are in our listening audience, please register for the census. Amen. Amen. The time is getting short, but you can still do it, so please, ma'am, please, sir, answer your door when they knock, or you can go on your computer and register, but it's important because you cut off funding for our community when we don't register. Amen. The fact of the matter is the census is so important that our Lord Jesus was born in a barn because his parents went to Bethlehem yes. to do what? Yes. Register for the census. Yes. Right. So please, ma'am, please, sir, take the time to do it. Answer the door, go on your computer and answer and make sure you get signed up for everybody in your household for the census. Second thing is that probably one of the most important elections in the history of Macon and make them be a county will take place on Tuesday. All right. If you have not voted, please, ma'am, please, sir, make it your business on Tuesday Amen. to get up, get out, and vote. Amen. Your Amen. vote counts, but it doesn't count until you show up and cast it. Amen. So Amen. please, ma'am, please, sir, make your vote count. Get out and vote. Thank you. Amen. From, the, from the record of First Samuel, Chapter 15, verses 16 through 26. 1 Samuel 15, 16 through 26. Again, reading from the original King James text. Well, stand up for a few minutes if you don't mind. Amen. 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 If you can stand. Got me on one accord. Amen. 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 1 Samuel 16, 15 rather, verses 16 through 26. From the original King James text, we says follows. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said to me this night. All right. He said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribe of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. All right. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, king of, the, of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took off the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight and burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice uh -huh. and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and, and thy words, because I feared the people, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Thank you. You may be seated. Yeah, I want to talk very briefly this morning from the subject from reigning king uh, to rejection. Right. From a reigning king to rejection. rejection. Amen. The Saul story truly is an illustration of the highs and lows of 
life out. God can raise one so high, but, but if one does not continue to trust in the Lord and follow him, right. one can fall so low. Amen. Can you imagine Saul's feeling when he hears from the prophet of God that God has rejected him? That, that's a sad indictment on a man who had risen so high by the power of God. And Samuel's Saul's story rather starts in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 8 when the leaders of the nation came to Samuel with a request for a king. You, you, you all may remember the story. At this point, Samuel was serving as a judge and a prophet in Israel. And, and, and but uh, by the time we get to chapter 8, Samuel has gotten old, uh -huh. and his two sons have not followed the Lord as Samuel did. Right. So there was some concern among the elders of the nation. And so they approached Samuel and said, we demand that we be given a king. All right. Jehovah God had been the king of the nation Israel ever since its beginning. But now the elders are making a demand for a king to lead them. And I want you to know that God has a plan and a purpose for each one of us. Amen. If we were to just follow the plan and you will accomplish the purpose. God always knows what's best for us. Yes. But sometimes we can get faith confused with human reasoning and, and, and we start trying to do things our way. Yeah, they said we want a king. And there were several reasons that the leaders gave Samuel for this request. First of all, as I said earlier, Samuel's sons were not godly men like their daddy was. They took bribes. Right. They were immoral. Uh -huh. And so the leaders feared that if these guys become the judges, which Samuel did appoint them judges, but it didn't work out because they were afraid that they would lead the nation into ruin uh -huh. once Samuel had died. Uh -huh. Second thing is that the nation had gone through, if you study the book of Judges, a series of temporary leaders in the judges, and now they are wanting something more permanent. All right. And the third reason is Israel wanted to be like the other nations and have their own king to honor. All right. Be careful about not being satisfied or content All right. with what God has given you. All right. You see, and don't, don't get to look around with what other folks have. And with what other folks are doing and enjoying, and forget how good God has been to each one of us. Right. Re re remember what I told you, God had always been Israel's king. Right. And if you are saved today, Jesus Christ is our king, and he has promised us one day that we will reign with him. So whenever I'm tempted to look and see what other folks are doing or their so-called successes, I am reminded of how good King Jesus is to me, yeah. has been to me, yeah. is to me right now, and the promises that he has made. And so if this is my mindset, I don't know what your mindset is, but as long as I have King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Hallelujah. Samuel's reaction to that request showed that he fully understood their unbelief and their rebellion. He said, I don't know what's ailing y'all, but he said, I got to uh, go talk to my boss about it. So he took it to God. God said, well, go ahead. Give them the key. But, but tell them what the cost would be. Because he understood that, 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 that it was their unbelief and their rebellion that was working because in essence they were rejecting Samuel. They were rejecting Jehovah God. Yes, the Father. Years later, if you think about it, and I preached about that text a few weeks ago, when they rejected the witnesses, I mean when they rejected Barabbas, yeah, the nation 
was rejecting the son. All right. So here we see them rejecting the father. And later on, years later, we reject the son. And then in Acts chapter 7, when they failed to believe the witness of the apostles, they rejected the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh-huh. And that's a sad yes. way to be. Yes. Because when you reject the Spirit, Jesus said, now, I can forgive you, you know, about what you do to me. My but you better believe the Holy Spirit. Right. So we can see by God telling Samuel, go ahead. Give them what they ask for. We can see in this an illustration of God's permissive will. Now, I already have a plan and purpose, but since you bound and determined to do it your way, I'll just let you go ahead on and go your way. But I must remind you that there will be consequences. He granted them their request. But he warns them that the cost of having a king would be high. My Lord, my Lord. You, you want him now, but are you going to support him my when he starts making demands on you and your property and your children? Right. Some of us, we want this or that. You, you want that great preacher with all that charisma, but are you going to support him? Yes. Are you going to love him just for everything going good? How are you going to treat him when things go bad? Yes. And I've seen it both ways in my life today. That's why I made up my mind to just do what God says. And, and you can't go wrong. The nation listened to Samuel. And then they heard everything they had to say. And, and what did they say? I want a king. Anyway, some of us just want what we want. And it really doesn't matter how other folks feel. That's all right. But one thing about it, you better wonder about how God feels about it. Yeah. They wanted to be like the other nations. Even though God had called them to be separate. Mm. Huh? Has it changed any? God called you. And through his grace brought us to faith in his son Jesus yes. to separate us, yes. sanctify us, right. to be something special. Amen. Amen. And yet, we still want to act like the Amen. other folks. Amen. Huh? Amen. Separated you. Yes. Chose you. Set you aside. Giving you the gift of the Spirit. And yet you still want to be like the heathen. I ain't talking about y'all. I'm talking about those people that are like that. Well, he called you to be separate. Because you, if you're separate and obedient, you will be a light that will draw others out of darkness. When they see Christ in you, sooner or later they'll want to see Christ in themselves. Hallelujah. We're told in chapter 9, how Saul was brought to Samuel and privately anointed for kingship. Some of y'all know the story. His daddy's donkeys got lost. He said, Saul, I want you to go and find my donkeys. And he looked here and there several places and couldn't find them. And then his, his servant told him, you know, there's a man of God in the city. All right. Prophet. Call him a seer back then. A seer means prophet. Maybe if we go ask him, he'll tell us. But what did Saul say? Church folks not going to like this. So I said, well, we don't have nothing to give a man of God. Uh -oh. uh, we don't have nothing to give a man of God. How we can go ask him and don't have anything but the, but the service. I got a little half a shekel. So I said, we'll give him that. Jesus. See, see, don't you see God's hand directing all? Have you ever looked back at your life to see how God just directed you? Even when you didn't know he was directing you? Yes. It went to Samuel just to find out about the donkeys, but Samuel had so much news to tell him because God had told Samuel the day before, I am sending a young man to you. Right. He, he went looking for the donkey, but God had already told Samuel, I am sending a man from Benjamin to you, and he's the one I want you to appoint to be king. Samuel shares all this with Saul, and, 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 he, and he takes him to the feast that he had already called and put him in the seat of honor. And told him, you know, the next morning all about what God was doing. And so you'll find three signs. First of all, you'll run into two men and they're going to tell you your father's donkeys have been found. Right. Run into three men with some goats and some wine and they're going to share what they have with you. Uh -huh. He said, then the third thing, you're going to run into some prophets playing instruments and praising God and prophesying. And guess what? God's spirit going to come on you and you're going to start prophesying. I'm going to they say, is that not so among the prophets? What is God doing? And so you see, he started out good. But 
now, one thing Samuel told him as he was giving him all this news, I'm going to come to you at a point in time in Gilgal, and we're going to offer a sacrifice. Uh -huh. And all I need you to do is just wait until I get there. All right. Before you do anything else, that it's a part of hour. Uh -huh. So look at this. Saul is doing good right now. Uh -huh. He has everything seemingly going for him. He had a lot of things in his favor. First of all, we are told that from the shoulders up, he stood taller than any person, in, in, any man in Israel. Told that he was the best looking man in Israel. This is your Bible. He had a strong body. A humble mind at the time that God was Samuel first approached him, he said, who am I? I'm from the smallest tribe. And even when they tried to uh, anoint him, they had to find him hiding among the back. He started out humble enough. Don't let success go to your head. Right. Strong body, mm -hmm. good looking, mm -hmm. humble mind, mm -hmm. a new heart. Because he had got with the prophet and God gave him a new heart. Mm -hmm. He had spiritual power, mm -hmm. loyal friends, Jesus. and most of all, he had the guidance and prayers of Samuel. Right. It's good to have a person who's connected to God right. praying for you. Because yeah. the Bible says the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous person very yeah. much. Yeah. Yet, in spite of all these advantages, mm -hmm. he failed. Right. He right. failed. The same reason so many people have fell down through the years, but still fell into this day. Right. Because he would not allow God to be Lord of his life. Amen. Some of us are willing to let God rule in certain areas, but other areas we try to keep to ourselves. But it's not until you give full surrender to the will of God that you can really accomplish everything that God has purposed and ordained for you to do. You, you've got to put him first. Stop letting your fleshy mind and your carnal self talk to you and start listening to his spirit when his spirit speaks to you. That's, right. That's when you ought to be obedient. Yes. So let's look at uh, some of, uh, a little bit more about Saul's life. This started out good enough, his kingship and everything. Uh, first of all, we saw that there was a request for a king, got granted. And then the second thing, as you look at uh, chapters 11 through 12, there is a renewal of the kingdom. Saul came in right, humble, willing to listen to the prophet and the voice of God. Right. And we found in chapter 11, after he's been uh, uh, coronated as king, trouble came as it always when you got to be tested. Yes. People won't know that your faith is real until it's been tested. Amen. You all may remember the story how the men of Jabez Gilead was being held hostage by the Ammonites. Nahash says, um, Y'all don't come out, I'm going to go in and put that eye, the right eye, out of every man there. And, and, and let that show Israel. It'll be an abomination to Israel. And, and they said, give us seven days. Give us some time. And they sent word out. And Saul heard about it. And Saul rallied the armies of Israel. And they defeated the Ammonites. So now Saul has experienced success. And so the nation is behind him. When he was first appointed, there was some that said, I saw get to be king. But after this great victory, everybody got behind Saul. And, and then and, and those that were grumbling, Saul's supporters said, let's put them to death. But Saul shows his humility by saying, this victory belongs to the Lord. All right. And we are all brothers. Yeah. Let, let's not put them to death. All right. he, he demonstrates uh, uh, that, that no, we don't really need to put them to death, let's, let's show mercy. Because he realized that God had been good to him. All right. And so, so now he can show mercy. Yeah. Samuel, at, at Saul's coronation, also went back over his service to the Israelites and to the Lord. He let them know, now you ask for your king and you have your king, but you have not done right by me, neither have you done right by God. And just to let them know that he was still in touch with God, he called for rain at the coronation, and right there in the midst of the dry season, a storm appeared. All right. he, he let them know that the power of God, you may have rejected Samuel, but God is still watching with him. The people rejected Samuel, but God stayed with him. All right. Now Saul 
is king yes, and, and, and he's doing well. But this is not a fairy tale. This is a true story. Right. So you've got to know that trouble is right up the road. Amen. Saul's downfall starts in chapter 13. So you have, first of all, a request for a king and it's granted. There's a renewal of the nation. But now let's look at the rejection uh -huh. of the king because that's where we can learn a lot about Saul and a lot about ourselves. Put, put yourself in Saul's spot. And so that we don't make the same mistakes All right. that Saul made. All right. I've been reading this throughout the week, that whole section from chapter 8 through chapter 15 and beyond. Uh -huh. and, and I can see Saul starting to get in trouble in chapter 13. Uh -huh. There are three sins recorded in chapter 13, 14, and 15, a sin in each chapter that ultimately cost him his honored position uh -oh. as king of Israel. And if we're not very careful, mm -hmm. these same things can happen to us yeah. and cause us to lose our effectiveness yeah. as witnesses yeah. for Jesus Christ. Right. For what good is a witness if nobody believes right. his testimony? Right. We, we have to look at it that way because God is our God. And he often used the analogy of a shepherd in his sheep mm -hmm. in talking about his people. His people need leadership, mm -hmm. but the leadership has to always be in touch with God. Amen. Don't you remember what David said? We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Think about that. And let me just tell you something about sheep just in case you didn't know. They're nearsighted. They, they, they don't have very good vision. But they are also hard-headed. They, I'm trying to find a nice way to say it. They, they're not the most smart. They're not the smartest animal. Let me say it that way. That you run into. They are prone to wander off. Huh? Isn't that what Isaiah said? We all, like sheep, have gone astray. We took every man to his own way. You, you see, sheep have to be shepherded. They have to be guided. David said, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness because I go the wrong way. For right. his name's sake. You see, it's not about me anymore. It's about him. And if I follow where he tells me to go, then I can lead to where he got for you to go. We, sheep, when they want to offer, they're prone to do so. They often find themselves in trouble and in Danger. Yes. But I found out that when we all want to call mm -hmm. the good shepherd, the chief shepherd, which is Jesus Christ, yes. the under shepherd, the pastors and the leaders, yes. if we all still don't want to call it, just ask God to guide us, yes. Yes. he'll surely do it. Yes. He'll do it. Yes. But, but he respects some things from us. He expects humility. Amen. He expects us to be patient. Yes. And that was Saul's first problem in chapter 13, his impatience got the best of him. Uh -huh. he, he, he didn't know how to wait on the Lord. Right. Uh -oh. So whatever you're dealing with today, whatever it is that's pressing on you, whatever it is that has you afraid, that, 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 that got you wanting to give up or, or give out, I stopped by today to tell you, you just got to learn how to wait on the Lord. Wait. Yeah. Wait. David said, I waited patiently on the Lord. Yeah. And he inclined yeah. unto me yeah. And he heard my cry. Yes. He didn't move right there, but when he moved, he took my feet right. out the muck and the miry clay. You, you just got to wait on him. He said, that day that wait on the Lord shall renew your strength. They shall burn up the wings of the knees they shall ride. Not get wet of it. Walk. Not think you got to wait on it. Yes. You, you, you see, he's a God. You can't have it. He'll be there. You don't have to wait. Yeah. He may not call yeah. right when you call him. Yeah. But when he gets there, you're going to have two witnesses. When he gets there, you got to keep me down while you got me down. Because when he gets there, yeah. he's right on time. Yeah. Saul, Saul didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So he became impatient. You see, I told you earlier, it's in the text, Simon. 
Saul, Samuel told Saul, wait. wait. No matter what is happening, you just wait. No matter what the enemy is doing, wait. you just wait. No matter what your followers and supporters are doing, you just wait. No matter what your flesh tells you to do, wait. You see, Saul was under pressure. And some of us today, we're under pressure. And my advice to you is to wait on the Lord. Wait, he's coming. He promised. There were some things going on. The enemy was encroaching. The Philistines were growing stronger. And the people were defecting. The folks around Saul were leaving. That's why you got to have a made up mind. You see, I don't know about the rest of you. But I have decided to follow Jesus. And no turning back. No turning back. I'm not neither looking to the right. Then it's not to the left, Miss Carswell. I'm looking straight ahead yeah. for my destiny. Yeah, right. You gotta wait sometimes. Yeah. So the time had come for Israel to gather at Gilgal, uh -huh. just as Saul and Samuel had agreed to do. The host of the Philistine began to assemble. Can you see the problem mountain? Uh huh. The longer Saul waited, he felt like the more dangerous his position became. But don't you know when you're in Jesus, you're always in a place of safety and security. He became concerned about what the enemy was doing. So many of us can't function faithfully because we are too concerned about what's going on in the White House. All the control you got on that is come November, then you got a little chance at it. But if, until November, you waste your time worried about whether you would get another check or not. What you all to worry about is doing and obeying the will of God, trusting in God. God knows all about it. God is already working it out. Whatever's going on up there is working for our good and God's glory. You waste your time worried about that. You ought to be praying about the things that are going on in your family, in your community, in your life. Ask God to help you, and God will help you. Once I say my prayers and put them in God's hands, I know they're in good hands. Yes, yeah, his position became dangerous. He said, I, if I were to strike right now, I can probably defeat him. Don't let the, don't let the circumstances fool you. If you're attacking God and told you to be still, you will be defeated. Yes, yes. His, his delay gave the enemy an opportunity to go stronger, but that's all right. Because Paul has told us that when I am weak, then am I strong. Yes, Saul's impatience, which really was just an outworking of what is unbelief. We, we are impatient when we don't believe. We are impatient. We don't trust God to do what he promised. We become impatient and our actions, if they are negative and adverse, it often because of the same reason as Saul. We, we have gotten a little something and we're afraid of losing it. Not realizing that everything we have is just a gift from God. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of life. Yes, it's for your good, but it's also for God's glory. Oh. Yes, yes. And, and so he, he he got impatient and his unbelief led him to go ahead. You know how sometimes you want to do something that you know you don't have any business doing. And God's word tell you don't do it. God's spirit tell you don't do, don't do it. But you don't want to hear that. Oh, I ain't going to get no aid in there. You don't want to hear that. You already have made up in your mind a course of action. And you really don't care what the word of God says. Or what his spirit says. You're going to do it anyhow. Because your mind made up. Y'all like never saw people like that. They with people like that. I deal with them all the time. He made his mind up to go ahead. Some told him, go ahead, Saul. Samuel ain't coming. He, 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 he'd, have, he'd have been here by now. And, and right at the fifth and ninth second, he went ahead and offered the sacrifice. And by the time he got ready to complete the sacrifice, here comes Samuel. Here comes Samuel. How he must have felt. But he went and willfully and willingly disobeyed God. Did it his way because of circumstances and, and the way he felt about it. 
And Samuel showed up. And, and what does he do? Saul starts to blame everybody but himself. So that's what we do. It got to be the council fault. If it wasn't him, it's him and the deacons. Maybe the choir had something to do with it. Let's just hang this matter. It's somebody's musician. They want to play this somebody fault. Somebody. He said, What did you do? Didn't I tell you to wait? Wait. This is God business. This is not our business. Didn't I tell you to wait? He, he said, but you don't understand that the enemy was coming in and, and the, my, my uh, followers were leaving and, and I forced myself. I forced myself. Huh? You forced yourself to tell that lie. Forced yourself to spread that gossip and slander. Forced yourself to Ride all night long when God has given you everything you need at home. I'm going to leave it alone. I know I was supposed to have been home, but I forced myself. Come on, real. This, this was the beginning of the end. Listen to me carefully. Because if God could not trust him in this little matter, how could he trust him with the kingdom? If he can't trust us with the little things that we promised him we'd do. You give me a little voice to sing, Lord, I'll sing my best. I'll get in the choir and do what I can. Uh, you give me a good spirit, a good attitude, a, a, a beautiful smile. I'll stand at the door and smile every chance I get. You give me a chance to serve in the deacon ministry, Lord. I will be a servant. I'll show up. I'll see too that everything that is done around the house of the Lord is done decently and in order. If you if you part me to be a minister, I'm going to study and work hard to show myself approved under God. A workman, not a saint, rightly dividing the word of truth. If he can't trust you with the little thing, I'll forgive them for what they did to me. I, I'm not worried about what they said about me. I love them anyway. I can't stop loving them because the devil put them up the top. If you can learn how that, that they live so that God can trust you with the little thing. Yeah. How can he trust you with something as powerful as the gospel of Jesus Christ? How huh, when he can't even trust you with the little thing? You want to be a Christian and yet hold grudges. Uh -huh. You want to be a Christian and abuse the little power God gives you. You, you want to be a Christian and let any and everything come out of your mouth. Preach God's way. You, you, you want to be a Christian, but yet you still want to be like them. You want them to applaud you. You want them to respect you. You want them to love you. But if they rejected the master, let me tell you something. They will reject you too. And when the world rejects you, that's the best thing that can happen to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't, don't get impatient. God has not overlooked your talent or gift that he's given you. God will bless you and, and, and he will bless your servant. He will multiply your, your witness. But you got to first learn how to wait on it. Not, not my way, I heard his son say. Not my way. Yeah, your way. Not my will, but your will be done. I, I, I have to wait. I'm one of these folks that something bad coming. I like to go on and get it over with, but he waited, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he waited. Jesus did patiently yeah. through the whole situation. I might get to that back now. All right, let's look at the second thing. First thing was impatience. Chapter 13. Chapter 14, pride. 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 We pretend to be so humble and pious, but behind that outside show, arrogance, stubbornness. I ain't stiff neck, but I ain't talking about nobody in here. Huh? Right, right. Talking about some folks who say that they're saved, but they have that pride. You know what the Bible says about that pride? After pride, oh. come at the fall. So watch yourselves now. Right. Let, well, let's look at Saul, but don't look at Saul only. Let's look at ourselves too. Amen. In chapter 14, we are told that Jonathan evidently was a godly man. That's Saul's son. And God gave him a great victory over the Philistines. Philistines. And, uh, Saul, saw it. That's another problem we have. We're not gonna deal with that today. Old jealousy. My Lord, my Lord. <laughs> but I might as well. Throw, that was free jealousy. Well, right. But we ain't gonna stay on that. Yeah. He, he became jealous of his own son, and so he came up. And his son got the victory because he trusted God, and God gave it to him. Right. And so Saul comes up with this vow: nobody's gonna eat anything, you know, until I say so. He, he, he gives a vow. 
of concerning him and all the soldiers. Now, how the soldiers going to fight right. with no energy and strength? So he gave a bar to Jonathan victory that no, no, nobody's eating anything, no soldiers, till he said, so but Jonathan didn't know about the battle. And so he came and ate some honey and everything. And then when the soldier, other soldiers saw what Jonathan did, what did they do? He ate some too. And so that when the next battle came up, when the next battle appeared, Saul and his army looked to God for direction and for guidance and nothing happened. Now Saul realizes that something is wrong. And, 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 and here's the sad thing about it. When he found out about Jonathan's disobedience, he became so angry that he set out to kill his own son. Isn't that like us? It, 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 Jonathan done sinned. He broke the vow. Isn't that like us? We always want to point out somebody else's sin. We always want to convict somebody else's sin. We always want to broadcast everybody else's sin. We always want to put everybody else on blast. What about your sin? We you going to stand up here and tell us about what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're planning to do. And tell us about your sin sometimes. It's easy to com be convicted about somebody else's sin. I want to know about yours. wanted to see his own son put to death because of a vow that he made yeah. out of jealousy. But the Bible says that the people rescued Jonathan, uh -huh. but Saul's actions revealed the darkness of his heart. It, it showed that he was no longer that humble man who, who uh, asked Samuel, why would God pick me on in the least of the Tribe, Benjamin, the smallest tribe, and I'm a, the least of my father's house. Why, why, what happened to that humble man that when they really brought him out to raise him up before the people he hid behind the baggage? No, he has grown into something different now and proud to do that for you. That's why sometimes success is about the worst thing to happen to some of us. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I could have ascended up real quickly if I'd done things the right way, but just like uh, Israel, I, 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 I sinned sometime and took the hard road, but I'm glad that when you really repent, God will overrule that bad stuff you're supposed to get and give you good things that you don't desire. But you have to be serious about your repentance. And you got to be serious about your service. If you're, if you're not, and I'm just speaking from my perspective now, if you're not going to give it all you have, then why bother to give it anything? If you're going to do something for God, you ought to give him your best. best right? And I guarantee you he will open up some things for you. He, he'll let you see some things that were right there before you all the time. But 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 you know sin will cause a breach sometimes with God will walk with him. And you can't see until you put that sin away. Yes, yeah, okay, let's get to this last thing so we can get out of here. Pride, impatience and pride. Watch those things. Watch for them in who? Yourself. In yourself. Amen. You can even spot them in other folks. Good evening. I give advice to folks all the time. If you see somebody in great places, better don't talk about them. If you, I don't care if it's a politician, preacher, government official, or whoever. Don't, don't go, don't go. There's enough folks on Facebook who gonna have to answer from one day for everything they put out there. So don't you jump, keep your two cent word to yourself. If it's negative, you, you keep it. You worry about yourselves and, 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 and because and, and, but pray for them. Pray for them. Because we are in positions to make a difference. Pray for me. Because I'm where I am because God put me there. And he has work for me to do for his kingdom. And if you don't pray for them, watch this. Learn from them. Because the very mouth you put on them while they it up and make mistakes, raise up. When you get up there, they're going to put it on you. So if you don't put it out there, on your way up. When you get up there, you have to worry about it coming back. But one thing I found out about the chickens, I don't know they mess up the barnyard, but they know their way back home, and that chicken will come back home and roost. Yes. I'm going to put it out there. Say it. It's not good keeping. Learn from folks. Yes, no matter how, how we go, we are all still works in progress. Yes, We're all susceptible to impatience. We're all susceptible to pride, and we all participate in this last one, disobedience. 
Y'all knew that was coming. It was in the text. So in spite of the first two things, can't you see how patient God is with Saul and Israel? Can you see it? Two mistakes. Some of us would have been cut Saul off. Would have stopped following him. Would have supported him. Two mistakes. And they were very grave. But yet God is still working with him. So if God can be so patient, preach God, Bill. If God can be so patient with Saul and with Israel and with us, it's coming with us. I know, I know, I know the majority of y'all have been walking straight all your life. But Joe, some of us went down the wrong path. Yes, sir. Then some of us treated folk wrong. Some of us treated our own bodies wrong. Our own family wrong. When we let down folk that had high hope for us, we made folk shame of us who want to stand by us. So if God was so patient with us and forgiving and loving with us, why can't we be that way to one another? If you, if you want power, that's what you got to do. If you want blessings, that's what you got to do. If you want your prayers answered, that's what you got to do. God is patient. So he says, Saul, chapter 15, Saul, give you one more chance. Prove yourself. I want you to go and destroy the Amalekites. Every one and everything that belongs to them. I am judging them for what they did to my children when they fled out of Egypt. How they attacked the weak ones at the back. They forgot about it. The children forgot about it. Yeah. The grandchildren forgot about it. Yeah. But I didn't forget about it. Yeah. Because they never repented. Don't you know when you sin and don't repent, guess what? You don't it's still alive. Yeah. He said, so I want you to wipe them all out. This is a decree from God. Don't, don't worry about what happened to the Amalekites or Agag. Don't worry about that. That's all God's business. Yeah. And your business is to do just what I tell you. Just what I tell you, just like when I told Moses to construct the tabernacle, I'm going to give you everything you need. I know you don't have half of this stuff in your possession, but you just build according to the blueprint and the plan that I give you. I will supply everything that you need, but I want it done right down to the last detail. Everything I command you, it better be in that tabernacle. All and right. it was. All right. So when I said destroy them all, I mean all. Oh. If you go there and burn down their little house or shack or whatever they live in, if a cop wants some corner of that, I want you to get it. Right. All, all of it. Right. And it is strong. But y'all know the story. Yes. Yes, so I went out and won the victory. Peace. But he didn't do what God told him to do. He didn't obey God. Oh, Kept the best for himself. himself. And he failed to kill Agag, king of the Amalekites. And so God spoke to Samuel. Samuel, I know you've been praying for Saul and leading him the way I told you to lead him, but uh, I gave him yet another chance uh, to prove himself worthy of the kingship of God's people, Israel. But yet he went and failed again. Yes, he's gone from impatience to pride and from pride to disobedience he, he's only half doing what I told him to do but I gave him power to do it all and while we looking at Saul I, I dare you to put your spiritual mirror on and take a look at yourself are you really doing all that God commanded you to do he did 50% but 50% wasn't enough and even may have gone to 75%, but that's not enough. Let me just tell you something. When you're doing God's work, and God tell you what he wants done, he wants all of it done. 99 and a half just won't do. You got to have a hundred. 
he let me down again, Samuel. And the Bible said when Samuel heard about it, because Samuel knew God. Some folks act like they know God. Some folks say they know God. Samuel knew God. And he knew Saul was in big trouble. The Bible says he wept. And he prayed all night. Uh-huh. Under God. For Saul. And God told him, get on up now and go tell Saul what I told you to tell him. Uh-huh. Samuel approached Saul. And when he saw Samuel coming, Saul started lying. Look, Samuel, I have obeyed the word of Almighty God. He, he tried to lie to Samuel, but his sins found him out. Because one thing about sin, uh, you can try your best to cover it up, but uh, you can't hide sin. I have obeyed the word of the Lord, and, and then the animals gave him away. Samuel said, oh no, you didn't totally obey the word of the Lord because if you hadn't done everything God told you to do, I wouldn't hear the sheep bleating and I wouldn't hear the ox lowing. Uh, I'm hearing some noises uh, that I ought not to be hearing. Uh, I ought to be hearing, uh, praise God, from whom all blessings flow, but instead I'm hearing a bad uh, Something right about it. Uh, you have once again uh, failed to do what God uh, told you to do. Uh, you took some of the animals, uh, and this is what Saul said again. He began to make excuses and point fingers at others. Uh, he said, You see, that the people, uh, uh, they saw the good animals, uh, and they took them aside uh, so that they could bring them to Gilgal. Uh, and offer a sacrifice uh, up to you. Uh, uh, and then we, the, me and the leaders, uh, we took the king uh, and we brought him on in. Uh, but yeah. we, we really did uh, what God wanted us to do. Uh, but ain't God all right? Uh, yeah. Simon said, well, let me tell you uh, what God uh, told me to tell you. Uh, I'm not like you. Uh, I've been working for God ever since Eli uh, anointed me uh, and made me a prophet. Uh, and I know when God tells me to do something, uh, he wants me to do it the very way uh, at the very time. Uh, and I can't do part of it. Uh, I will tell you uh, what God uh, told me to tell you. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, he pointed out to Saul, uh, you started out uh, a very humble man. Uh, and a humble king, huh? but somewhere along the way, huh? you have lost your humility, huh? you have become proud huh? and disobedient, huh? and you have rebelled huh? against the word huh? of the Lord, huh? and now you're trying to cover huh? your sin huh? with sacrifices, huh? but don't you know, huh? sacrificing uh, a good thing uh, to cover sin. Uh, but God prefers uh, that you obey him uh, rather than uh, sacrifice. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, I would rather uh, you do uh, what I told you to do uh, and then uh, make the sacrifice. Uh, but because then uh, your sacrifice uh, will be a sweet savor uh, up in heaven. But, uh, but how can you sit uh, up a sweet savor uh, when your heart uh, is not right uh, with God? Uh, your prayers are going up uh, and then coming right back down uh, unanswered uh, because you failed uh, to do what God uh, told you to do uh, and tried to hide it uh, behind a religious act, uh, but you can't fool God. Uh, you can fool some of the people uh, some of the time, uh, but you can't fool God. Uh, none of the time uh, that I get a witness. Uh, here's the problem uh, with Saul. Uh, and it's the same problem uh, that's plaguing the church today. Uh, there are too many people uh, who are substituting, uh, saying, uh, for doing. Uh, you talk a good game uh, about how much you love the Lord uh, and how faithful you are serving Him. You tell people that uh, everywhere you go, uh, even towards your 
position. Uh, this is what I do uh, around the church. Uh, I do all this for the Lord. Uh, but all you're really doing uh, is just saying uh, but not doing. Uh, I know I'm right about it. But I hear what you say. But I see what you're not doing. Uh, thank God all right. Not to use excuses uh, instead of confession. Uh, excuses. Uh, Try to shift the blame uh, from ourselves uh, and put it on uh, somebody else. Uh, God uh, is not interested uh, in our excuses. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, but David said uh, he will hear you uh, if you confess uh, and are serious uh, with your confession. Uh, I don't have to go before the Lord uh, and lay down and tell him uh, about what somebody else has done. Uh, Tell him uh, all about my sin uh, and I ask him uh, to cleanse me uh, and forgive me. Uh, can't make excuses. Uh, we ought to be confessing. Uh, and then he tried uh, to use sacrifice uh, to cover disobedience. Uh, you can't get to this life uh, trying to fool people uh, and trying to fool God. Uh, he was like so many of us uh, too quick. Uh, to criticize uh, and put the blame uh, on someone else uh, and then yet unwilling uh, to face the, uh, to our own sin. Uh, I'm glad uh, that God sits high uh, and he looks low. Uh, he sees uh, everywhere we go. Uh, he knows uh, all about us. Uh, and then Samuel, uh, after he told him uh, what God said, uh, he turned to walk away. Uh, Thank God, all right. Saul said, I have sinned. Samuel said, that ain't a real confession. All you're doing is stating the truth. I have sinned. Samuel wasn't impressed with Saul saying, I have sinned. True confession is more than just saying, I have sinned. It means I'm sorry that I sinned. And I learned a good lesson that I ought not to do something that I know is wrong. But I ought to just wait and trust in the Lord. Second, so say, I hear you saying uh, that you sin, uh, but he turns his back uh, to walk away. Uh, and Saul reached out uh, and grabbed his robe uh, and the robe tore. Uh, and Samuel said, See, uh, just like the robe uh, tore, uh, and you ripped it uh, from me. Uh, God uh, is in the rip uh, his kingdom uh, from you, uh, but you have. Uh, the word of God and God has rejected you from being king of Israel. Ain't it sad that Saul's story goes downhill from there? The Bible says Samuel went home and never walked with Saul anymore. And we read about Saul in 2 Samuel being put to death by an Amalekite, one of the very people he was supposed to destroy. Can't you see it? Those things that you're supposed to destroy and put away. If you don't get serious about destroying and putting them away, they will put you away. And I get a witness, be careful and do everything that God told you to do. And your life will be worth all the living. Because I'm glad that the Bible said Samuel went home and no longer walked with Saul. But we have a who had promised uh, that he would never uh, leave us uh, or forsake us uh, if we walk uh, with him uh, he will uh, walk with us uh, he's a king uh, who gave us uh, an example uh, of how to live uh, with patience uh, how to live uh, with humility uh, how to live uh, in obedience uh, he was obedient even before he left uh, his home in heaven uh, and came down uh, from his Shekinah glory uh, 
his heavenly dwelling place was obedient to the will of the Father and stepped out of heaven in the time could have been born in a palace but was born in a manger in Bethlehem raised up in one of the long cities in Galilee a little village named Nazareth for great things to come out of small places I'm glad all the things obeyed the Father from the cradle to the cross and he will empower us to live a life of humility, a life of patience, a life of faith, an obedient life so that your light can shine in all the darkness that's surrounding us at this present time. Look at us in the midst of a pandemic, in the midst of racial unrest, in the midst of economic decline, in the midst of unparalleled hatred, in the midst of all the death, I can still stand and testify you today that it is well, it is well, it is well. Soul. Is there anybody here that testify with the hospital running over? It's easy now to get in jail than it is to get in the hospital. And the jail I want you down, or you might spare it down. In the midst of all this adversity, it is wild. It's wild. Wow. Because if they can't let me in the hospital, I've got a healer who will show up and heal me right where I am. He's a doctor who never lost the chain. If they need body hell who knows and loves my children, anybody Unto the cross, obedient unto death, even on the death on the cross. In other words, to secure our forgiveness, to secure our redemption, to secure our salvation. He died. He died. He died. For our living. Right now. 